Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking around the globe, one of the major issues in every country, and really all the continents, is about water and how we're going to manage water and to increase availability of water for all citizens as we move through the 21st century. And I have a gentleman that's uh, joining us from uh, Lisbon in Portugal, and he's a worldwide expert on MARs, Manage Aquifer Recharge. This is something that's actually going on in many countries around the world, uh, but this particular laboratory coming out of the Portuguese uh, National Civil Engineering Laboratory is one of the world leaders. This is Dr. Lobo Fiera. He's the principal research officer. And Lobo, welcome back to the Emerald Planet TV. It is my pleasure to be here again, Dr. Sam. Now, looking at uh, Lanek, uh, why is that so important? And why is it so large as far as its outreach and its research capabilities for all of the European Union, but also around the world? Well, uh, we have established a large network uh, interconnecting the continents because we had the Portuguese speaking countries there and we have sister laboratories there and everybody to come to the neck has to we have a PhD degree PhD degree, so we have like 200 PhDs. And to have a PhD, you have to research. And as LANEC is not a university, it's a state research laboratory, we have to apply. So we're trying to apply not only in Portugal, but around the world through our connections. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this uh, MAR, this Managed Aquifer Recharge, uh, this is something that is going on in many countries around the world. So why is Lanek so much involved in this? And actually, we're going to be finding out so integrated with other countries, not only in the European Union, but the Middle East and all speaking Portuguese speaking countries. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, we have research and I have developed a model that's turning worldwide to come from precipitation to evapotranspiration, surface runoff and groundwater recharge. And we are seeing in the last decades, and we have modeled this in Portugal and around the world in our case study areas, demo areas and projects, that really the pattern change is changing. We have much more concentrated events that creates floods, less groundwater recharge. And so managed aquifer recharge is for us in a scientific based way to do what Mother Nature was doing before. We have just destroyed the forest, doing urbanization, etc. It's changing the paradigm that I was willing to do, converting floods, not in a disaster problem, but in a source of water when you don't have water in drought years. And we have seen that this uh, amount of precipitation and droughts, the average is still the same. This is good news, but it's much more concentrated and so if you don't use this to incorporate where appropriated to manage aquifer recharge, the groundwater dependent ecosystems probably will disappear. And that will be a catastrophe for the green and the Emerald Planet TV is fighting to have them back. Okay, so this is a scientific based way. The droughts are increasing. If you look to the map of United States, it's just not a spot. It's concentrated in larger areas and requires different approaches. That's what we're doing. 
Now, looking at uh, your motto here, sound, safe, and sustainable strategy, how does uh, Marsol actually exemplify this motto that you have? Yeah, it's a pleasure to be able to answer to that question. Really, uh, I was invited by Malta. Now we are, the Portuguese presidency is in the European Union this semester. One of the previous semester was Malta that invited me to the next presidency in Slovakia, in Bratislava, to talk to 70 people from the water authorities of those countries that are always afraid of quality. And they have also this obligation to be afraid. But a lot of times they forget what's happening in the Mediterranean area, Southern Europe, like mm -hmm. California also. It's not Mediterranean, but the climate is Mediterranean, or Australia, etc. And the quantity, much of the time, is overlooked. So what we would like to say here is that we have proved in so many case studies through our modeling, and we are doing the same here in Marsolut at the moment, creating man-made soils to remove pollution so that we can incorporate in a safe, sound and sustainable way. For instance, let me give an example in Northern Italy. The water coming from the Alps, from all those beautiful areas like Lake Como, etc., they have like thunder floods. And then if you incorporate this in large dams, that will create a buffer zone for the floods not going to the Po River, you are able later to release this water in a very nice, appropriate way to be incorporated in the ground where the farmers have over pumped the groundwater. So mm -hmm. floods convert in a source of water and you come back both things. That's what we are targeting to do and to create the ability in the uh, well, European Union where we are having a strong dialogue that this has to be tested and the framework water directive allows us to do that. But uh, the water authorities in most of the countries, they are still afraid. That's why we have put this, this decision maker brief uh, to launch that we know. Of course, we have risks, but we are aware of those risks and we know how to combat those risks. Yeah, and looking at it as far as Marceau, uh, looking at these various strategies, it's not just one strategy, it's as many strategies as possible in order to capture, sequester, process, and then properly use the water. So looking at the different images that we have here, Lobo, how is this combination helping to even out the ebb and flow as far as water? We have too much uh, one month, uh, we're then almost immediately into drought and it's constantly up and down. How do we level out uh, the availability of water? Yeah, I love, the, I love those pictures because those pictures have always a problem. But through the Marsol, we got them to be as a solution, learning for the others. For instance, you have in uh, Israel, it was one of the demo areas that we have, Merkorot, they are reusing like almost 80% of the, the flesh water, the flesh water. So you go in wastewater, go to treatment plants, and do you reinject that. In Europe, we are a lot. Uh, far from that area, probably 12% or less. Mm -hmm. So we are treating ourselves like rich water countries and we are not. So we were targeting to have water from the wastewater treatment plants like in Portugal in the southern area, but also in Israel, uh, in, uh, in Spain, they were doing in Madrid, uh, having the river and controlling the river for the farmers and the farmers uh, have learned how to take in account of that. So they are asking, please do manage aquifer recharge because we need. And of course, we have always problems like the cuvetas, is the, the, the base ground is just like holes. And then sometimes when the water level is low, the water is not flowing and create problems of water quality. But we were addressing all this through modeling. I was the leader of the WP work package model there. Model is a simulation of reality. So you put everything that uh, corresponds to our world and you test not only on the physical area like this, but you test. You see myself in a red shirt there trying to have a, a, an experiment, a tracer experiment where we have 
several piezometers, you inject this water with a tracer, and then you detect later what is the response of the ground, underground, the aquifer. So you plug in the models, the, the values that we've detected there. But we have also difference, like I was telling you a little before, in uh, over this MA uh, Marshall letters, you have CB in northern Italy, precisely what I was saying, coming from that dam from the Alps, you have water that went down by over pumping. Now you have a forest or just a tree orchard there, but you put like canals in between. So it's absolutely nice, natural based solution, and we are treating this in such a way. So we are using rainwater in the wets or this uh, infernal rivers that we have so much in California. We have fantastic know-how available there, like the insufflatable dams also. When it rains, you put like an insufflatable dam and you create the water pressure to go in. And so the application worldwide that you train to learn from each other is great. You are saying that we have this around the world. We have an ISMAR, so is people every couple of years to join. Last one is, was in Madrid. I was in Abu Dhabi before, and so like 300 people were showing how to apply in Namibia, in the, the sponge cities in China, in Brazil, the, the similar concept of sponge cities there. So in Chicago, I was there in Chicago, and we have parks in Chicago where the kids are playing in the ground, but it's just like a soup dish. You don't notice, but when it rains, the water stays there, you don't allow the kids to go, and this water goes slowly to be released. So this is very nice. It was just not so long ago, 96, the first ever diffuse pollution seminar in San Francisco, in, uh, in Chicago. This is all novelty. So through uh, Emerald Planet TV, I think that we can say to the others, we trust on the solution. Let us try to apply. Right. Now, looking at uh, this very complicated system, I, I put this up here. You shared this with us, but let's look at it uh, in reality. What are yeah, we okay. seeing here and why does this work? And is the complexity that we're seeing needed? And we only have about time for one more question, so we have to yeah. be quick. Yeah, you know, the Algarve is a very uh, nice place for the Europeans, probably the best place to go in holidays selected by the travel agencies. And then you have a lot of people in summertime before the COVID, and then you have much less people. So we have dimension this wastewater treatment plan. And you see the small dots there, there's two small basins. We are trying to take without energy, so gravity flowing, Instead of going to the rivers with a lot of nitrate, you just put them through these basins where we create the man-made soil to remove the pollutants to go to the streams that afterwards go to the aquifer. So removing the pollution and then use, make this useful for agriculture with the control, the protocol of the quality that the Portuguese government is trying to say to the farmers you need this type of quality. We have we are able to give you this. So don't use for lettuce, use this for orchards. So the control of quality is a must. We are trying to test here. And also in the lab, the picture before it was just the cut of this. You see, you have the basins there and you are simulating in a model, reduced model in Lenec precisely to correct this and to remove the hydrocarbons, pesticides, so that we are in the safe side in quality too. I do believe- Okay, Lobo, we got uh, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Thank you. Uh, looking at uh, the future, what, we, what do you see as far as this type of program? Well, we have to incorporate the East industries so that we are able also to rehabilitate the water coming from the industries so that they are just self-contained and sometimes they can plus plug then in the soil the water they have also the, the the temperature and pump it back and the farmers they are doing that but for most saying to the water authorities that can rely on the science because we are creating a network around the world and we are here to help you scientific based fantastic dr lobo fiera principal research officer Lenek, thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. My pleasure.
Looking around the globe for the major issues facing planet Earth, of course, centers around water and managing water in areas where you have too much at some times and then droughts almost immediately following. We have someone is coming from the Technological University of Darmstadt in Germany. This is Professor Christoph Sut, and he's talking about Marsol and Marsalut uh, projects. And these are very important as far as where we're going to create what's known now as new water. So Christoph, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Tell us a little bit about the history of your university and why is it so much involved in this uh, Mars Salute and the MAR movement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Technical University of Darmstadt is one of the technical universities in Germany. And these technical universities are focused on solving problems, actually. And the University of Darmstadt was founded more than 100 years ago, about 150 years ago. And this is mainly engineers, but also some part of the university is natural sciences. And together with the engineers, the natural science group is developing solutions for one of the major problems that we have in our world. And this is the access to enough and clean water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and looking at this uh, chart here, this is something that uh, we've been sharing about this uh, MAR. Why is the management aquifer recharge uh, becoming such a topic literally every place on the planet mm -hmm. Earth? This is because there are re several reasons for this. Uh, one of the first reasons is that we have, of course, a growing population on Earth and we need more and more water. The second reason why it's becoming an issue is also that we have climatic changes. So we have in places of the world less water available, but we need to supply more water to the populations. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need alternative solutions. And managed aquifer recharge is one of these alternative solutions. What we make use of is the storage capacity of the subsurface to enrich groundwater resources in times when we have enough water and even an excess of water. And we can use that water then in times when we have a deficit of water and when we need it actually. Mm -hmm. So the subsurface acts like an intermediate storage. Yeah. And looking at this, really what you're doing is you're evening out the, uh, the flow, no pun intended, as far as water is concerned. So if you have a drought, you still uh, have sufficient water for those times. Uh, but when you have massive flooding, you're actually capturing that water and storing it underground. Is that the broad concept of what you're doing? That is a broad concept because we have a mismatch between water availability and water demand, actually. And this mismatch can be covered by intermediate storage. And one of the water sources that we can use is runoff. If we have um, high precipitation rates, we can capture that water. But of course, there are other water resources available, like treated wastewater, which typically has a pretty good quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, these sources can also be used and can be infiltrated for later usage. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at uh, the work that you are doing, <clears throat> you're going across uh, much of the European Union. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the eight countries listed here. Why is it so critical uh, that you do this research, the studies and the publishing, which is very important, as far as these eight countries? What you see here is that these eight countries are located in the southern part of Europe, in the Mediterranean. And if we forecast uh, how the climate change will affect these countries, we might experience a 50% decrease in the available water resources by the year 2100. So we have to prepare, actually. And this is why we actually looked into the Mediterranean area. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a number of techniques that you're using. Uh, all of these are very practical. Uh, but what, we, what are we looking at here, Christoph, uh, mm -hmm. that allows you to start preparing for evening out uh, the availability of water from drought to flooding and back to drought? Mm -hmm. What you see here in this uh, slide is three different examples of managed aquifer recharge schemes. And this is also the concept of the Marsol project, or was the concept of the Marsol project, that we use basically different experimental setups, different field sites, different sources of water 
to cover a very broad range of available water resources for storage. And that also made the project so interesting and so important because we are not focusing on one specific source. We are covering a huge range of different water sources and different infiltration mechanisms that we have in order to find the best solution for a specific place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at uh, this uh, chart that we have here mm -hmm. in front of us, tell us what we're looking at and mm -hmm. why is this so important to understand and also very important for the public to understand that there, there are professionals just like you that are looking at their needs and making sure that we're taking care of them uh, way into the future. What we are looking at here is basically different examples of how water can be infiltrated into the subsurface. We have on the left side flooding irrigation, so we spread water on the surface. We have in the middle basins or ditches, so which are dig into the ground, and we might also have wells or shafts where water is directly infiltrated into the subsurface. Mm -hmm. What we also see here is that the unsaturated zone, this is basically where we infiltrate the water into, can be used to polish water quality. And the thicker the unsaturated zone, the higher there is the retention capacity to remove, for example, contaminants that might be still present in the water. So if we have a thick unsaturated zone, the retention capacity is very good for contaminants and the source water quality can be basically um, somehow not as good as uh, compared to the example that we completely infiltrate the water into wells, directly into the aquifer. So the source quality has to be very good if we directly infiltrate into wells, into the aquifers, and it can be of uh, less quality if we have a thick unsaturated zone where the infiltrated water can be somehow improved in quality to, to microbial degradation processes or sorption processes, removing contaminants from the water phase. Now, looking at the, let's stay on this, Christoph, if you don't mind yeah. for just another uh, question in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things as far as uh, most water experts, <clears throat> they're always looking at quality, always looking at quality. Uh, and they forget about quantity. And as we move forward through the 21st century, uh, less and less quantity is available to many uh, communities and uh, many countries. So mm -hmm. how what we're looking at right here, Christoph, helps to balance uh, quality, but also quantity. You're raising there a very important point. Of course, there's quality aspects. This is very important. But the quantity basically is also a driver of our research. The quantity issue can be addressed by saying, I do not need the same quality for every purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, if I produce drinking water, the quality has to be different to water that I might use for agriculture or for mm -hmm. other purposes. Right. We call this concept fit for purpose. So you have to treat the water according to the expected need for the water. If you need it for agriculture, you can treat it differently, or you can even reuse water for agriculture without much treatment. So. The, the quality aspect is one thing and the quantity aspect is another thing and they are connected somehow by this uh, thinking that you need a specific quality for a specific reason, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the beneficiaries and the partners as far as this Marsul, you are the, the coordinator for this. Tell us a little bit about this broad collection, mm -hmm. both beneficiaries mm -hmm. and partners. Mm -hmm. What you see is exactly something that is needed for projects like this. We have beneficiaries, that's the people involved getting money from the European Union in this case. And we have the partners that are very interested in the output of our research. And what you see here is a collection of research institutes, of universities, of companies, and also about regulating agencies. So you need the whole range of stakeholders in order to make a sound project. Yeah, It doesn't make any sense just to do research without connecting that to companies later applying that research and to regulatory agencies that, has, that have to somehow develop the regulatory framework, uh, how this technology can be used later in the field. So this was a general setup. We have partners from research, from universities, from companies from regulating agencies. And that makes completely sense if you have a technology that you would later apply in the field. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this give comfort to, there'll be millions of uh, citizens watching this mm -hmm. across uh, 214 countries and territories. 
just this simple chart, how does this give them comfort that mm -hmm. you really are the professionals, the researchers uh, in water really looking after mm -hmm. their benefits and mm -hmm. their future and their families? What you, for example, see here in terms of partners, on the right hand side, you see Mekarot, for example, and Mekarot is the uh, water supply company of Israel. So these are the people responsible for water supply of a country. And they are involved here as they are expecting that the results are usable for them. Mm -hmm. The next point I would like to make is I'm a researcher. And what we do as a researcher, we produce output in terms of publications. Publications go through a review process. So colleagues of mine get these publications and look at it and they determine whether it makes sense what we do or not. And if it makes sense, it's published. And we publish, of course, our results a lot and all partners do that because we are open for discussion also. So the results we present are discussed, they are acknowledged, and if they are okay, they are published. And this output gives us confidence that what we do is correct and what we do has a kind of scientific basis. Now, uh, looking at uh, this very complicated structure, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Yeah. But again, going back to the quality versus quantity issue, or I shouldn't say versus quantity mm -hmm. and quality uh, issues, how does yeah. this directly relate to that and the research that you are doing at your university? What you see here in this uh, slide is basically the setup of the Marsol project. And I brought that up because I wanted to show you how complex such a project can be and all the factors you have to consider. If you, for example, focus on this activity line three, you see everything that is involved in such a large project. It's mm -hmm. investigation and monitoring techniques, modeling techniques, technical solution, benchmarking, water quality. The economy, of course, also has to fit because it doesn't make sense if it's too costly to do something like this. Mm -hmm. There's technology assessment risks. You have to evaluate the risk of such a project. And in the end, it came out to be one of the most important factors. It's legal issues, policy and governance. Mm -hmm. You have to have rules how to apply such a technology. And this has to be done in accordance to the policy of the European Union, for example, because they gave us the money to do that. And they were also asking for suggestions how to implement this in terms of legal issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, we're going to leave this up uh, just to show how complicated the uh, laboratories are and how you're really taking good care. Uh, but within the 20 seconds we have left, Christoph, why is this uh, more salute? so important and uh what do you see for its future and we got to be quick yeah well what i would like to state in the end is that managed aquifer recharge is a sound safe and sustainable strategy that can be applied with very great confidence this is one of the pieces in the puzzle to show our water programs in the future mm -hmm. fantastic this is professor christoph suit uh, of the tu darmstadt uh, thank you as we create the Emerald Planet. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Looking around the globe for those thousand best practices, we're looking for countries in which they are actually addressing the issue of water. And how do we create new water for expanding populations in very dry conditions? We have Dr. Daniel Kurtzman, who is with the Agricultural Research Organization of Israel. And they've been working on and dealing with the lack of water since the beginning of the Israeli state. And uh, Danny, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you, Sam. Looking at your organization, the Agricultural Research Organization, why is that so important? And how does that fit into the Marsalute uh, research projects? Okay, the Agricultural Research Organization is uh, generally dealing with agriculture, but within it we have a few institutes. I'm a member of the Institute of Soil, Water and Environmental Sciences. And I'm a subsurface hydrologist, so I'm in charge of water resources research. Well, uh, agriculture and arid and semi-arid areas was always about irrigation water and allocating water. So therefore, uh, water resources research and 
Man and Decker for recharge as uh, a research concerning water resources is uh, we're always interested in. Now, looking at uh, this complicated chart as far as the uh, Marsult and the MAR, Manage Aquifer Recharge, why is this chart actually so important for the state of Israel and all of its surrounding neighbors? Uh, using aquifers, the main role of aquifers in the managed aquifer recharge operation, in my point uh, of view, is the storage. When we use the subsurface, we get cheap and large storage because land is very expensive. Constructing uh, surface storage is very expensive. And when we put the water in the subsurface, it's uh, almost for free, although it's not a perfect reservoir. We don't have any concrete walls in the aquifers, but water flows in the aquifers slow. So we can store the water there between seasons or between drought years and rainy years. And for this time, time scales, these are excellent reservoirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now looking at uh, the Sea of Galilee as far as uh, desalinization projects, uh, floods and wastewater treatment, how do these three sources of new water really play a role in providing a steady and reliable source of water for the whole country? Well, uh, as you see in the picture there, uh, in black is what we call the Israeli coastal aquifer. Well, this is the aquifer that uh, was first exploited since the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. The drilling uh, technology uh, became available in this part of the world and uh, we drilled many wells in this aquifer and develops, developed uh, villages, towns and city and the metropolitan of Tel Aviv uh, on these waters. Uh, by the middle of the 20th century, uh, the water in this aquifer were very low level and below sea level and water from the sea started to flow into the aquifer and salinize some wells in Tel Aviv and other places. Therefore, we have to seek for new water resources, like the Sea of Galilee was connected to the system in the 1960s. Uh, so the water from the Sea of Galilee not only flowed in this, the national water carrier to the uh, households and uh, fields for irrigation, but also flowed directly to recharge the aquifer. Uh, same uh, for floods, we managed to catch some ephemeral floods from some streams and redirect the water to the aquifer instead of letting them being wasted to the sea and salinized. In the 1970s, 1980s, we really realized large cities are large sources of water. Although this is not water for drinking quality, but, but it's good for uh, irrigation. And our main uh, uh, managed aquifer recharge operation today is letting secondary affluence of uh, the Tel Aviv uh, metropole infiltrate into this aquifer and then pumped and then pumped there of much higher quality and then sent to the Negev for irrigation. Now, looking at floods, this is something you don't really think of floods in Israel, but you certainly have them. Uh, how do these really supplement what you need as far as recharging your aquifers? Well, uh, in Israel, we hardly have any uh, rivers that have a base flow. Uh, all the flow in the streams and rivers are ephemeral. That means only after rainy days in the winter, we have such uh, floods. So, especially in the 1950s, 1960s, and until today, it looked as a waste of water for us letting these floods flow to the Mediterranean. So we managed to have two very elegant uh, managed aquifer recharge system in which we divert the floods, let them percolate to the aquifer, and then pump them in the summer. Uh, for household and irrigation use. Mm -hmm. 
Now, looking at uh, wastewater treatment plants, <clears throat> how do they fit into the schema along with your seawater desalinization plants? So let me go back to uh, the wastewater treatment plants. Okay. Uh, today, a large portion of irrigation water in Israel are based on treated wastewater. Actually, about half of the water allocated for agriculture is wastewater treatment plants. And the largest project is taking all the treated wastewater of the Tel Aviv metro metropole, which is about a third or 30% of all the wastewater in Israel, and taking the effluence of a secondary wastewater treatment plant that we have south of Tel Aviv, it's called the Shafdan, and letting them percolate to sands that we have sand dunes south of Tel Aviv, uh, and then pump them uh, through dedicated wells, and they all go to one red pipe, large diameter pipe, 130 kilometers south to the Negev Desert, and uh, they, we irrigate them, uh, and actually this project enabled moving the center of mass of food production in Israel south to desert land, to cheap land, uh, before it was in the center where the prices of land uh, are higher. and. Another thing, uh, agriculture also contaminates groundwater, especially with nitrates. In this way, when we irrigate in the desert, we don't have an exploitable aquifer below. So the, the, it's better to have the intensive agriculture down there in the desert. And uh, Tel Aviv wastewater is the source of most of the agriculture there. Now, uh Seawater desalinization is a very expensive type of water, but yet it's still critically important for Israel. What are you learning from your research that actually can apply to other uh, desert or semi-area uh, countries and uh, also may be uh, available on the seacoast for cities across the world? Yeah, okay. Well, uh... When I said storage, uh, towards the 21st century, Israel realized uh, no, what, no matter storage, we need more freshwater sources. Mm -hmm. And the reverse osmosis technology uh, came to a point that it meant uh, the Israeli economy and the people can, the household people, not farmers, can pay for uh, this water and since uh, the last 15 years, uh, a great deal of the fresh water that we drink and some of what we use for irrigation is uh, desalinated seawater. Uh, the thing is, of course, 99% of the time, the desalinated seawater are produced and uh, put into the national water carrier and they're, they're, they're used uh, directly. But there are points in time where you don't want to, to, to stop the large, very large desalination plants, as you see, from working, but the demand for water is, uh, is uh, uh, not as high, like in the winter, mm -hmm. or when times when the national water grid goes through a, a you have to fix it. Uh, 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 so there, at these times, we take the water and store it in the aquifer. Mm -hmm. And what we learned from our research that the, 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 the quality of the water improves with this process because the desalinated water lacks some important minerals like calcium and magnesium. And when we let the, this water percolate through the soil and the sediment, they gain from the rocks, from the sediment, some of these minerals, and they also mix with natural groundwater. And the product we get after pumping is, in terms of the uh, mineralization of the water, is a better product than the pure desalinated water. I see. 
Now, what is this about uh, Marsalute, cheap water storage? Well, Marsalute uh, is the, uh, the project, uh, all four of the of us that are interviewed today are involved in, and it all deals with managed aquifer recharge. Well, uh, I put this slide uh, because I want to emphasize what I think is the most important uh, role of managed aquifer recharge, and it's the cheap water storage. So that's not for Marsalute, it's only a logo of our mm -hmm. project, but uh, it is. Uh, and the second, the second most important thing that I just talked about it, that managed aquifer recharge is also a good and cheap water treatment. Mm -hmm. So these are the two things I believe uh, uh, are most important in managed aquifer recharge. Okay, uh, we're going out on this. We're just going to leave this up because uh, we've run out of time. What do you see for the, uh, the, the managed aquifer recharge uh, as a system across the world, uh, say, uh, being adopted over the next 5, 10, or 15 years, and you have about 20 seconds. We've got to be quick. Yeah, well, uh, today about only 1% of the water abstracted in the world is water that was recharged, uh, managed, not naturally. Now, in Israel, it's about 10 or 15% of the water. So the, it's still, there's, it, and it will come more in semi-arid Mediterranean areas. It's, it, it's a way to save water. And as I said, store water and treat water mm -hmm. that I'm sure it will grow. Okay, fantastic. This is the, uh, Dr. Daniel Kurtzman, uh, the Agricultural Research Organization of Israel. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Uh, you're welcome. Looking at a large country like Spain with the expanding population, also uh, very dry areas uh, among its geographical formations, is very much involved in what's called Mar Salute. This is a managed aquifer recharge. And this is something that's being studied through the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. And we have with us as a guest is Professor Xavier Sanchez uh, Vela. And Xavier, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Hi. Glad, glad to, to have be here. you with us. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Say, uh, the slides we're going to be sharing are somewhat complicated because you're involved in computer modeling and all that. But talk about the uh, shortly, uh, the University of, of uh, Catalonia, the Polytechnic there, and why it's so important and its work with Mar Salute. We are here in, in, in Barcelona. This is a dry area, as you, you were saying, with a lot of, with a high population. So we are, have always this uh, large problem of water resources management. So we are very interested in all the topics. We, we, I'm here in the civil and environmental engineering school. Mm -hmm. So we deal with all the aspects about bringing water from one place to another one, but also all the aspects related to quality of this water and how this water if it's safe for the population, risk for the population, and, and so on. Right. Now, looking at this uh, complicated chart that we have in front of us, but this is all about the managed uh, aquifer recharge. Why is this chart so important? And what comfort can citizens within Spain, other countries, take from the research that you are doing to protect their interests, but also make sure that they have both a sufficient amount of water but also the quality of the water. Exactly, this is the, the right duality. I mean, you, you really have to study the amount of water, but also the quality of this water. That's very mm -hmm. important. Now, the idea is relatively simple. If you go back a few years, you say, okay, uh, we need water. You know, like this is, this was in the seventies, something like that. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we need water and we have water. The only problem that we have is we have wastewater or we have water opportunity water that we call mm -hmm. this storm water, something like that, only when it rains. And here it doesn't rain. It rains maybe 20 days a year or something like that. So, mm. uh, so, so the important point is when we have water, we have to use it. And then, of course, 
You cannot do that because this water is not the right quality. So you need to do something. You want to store it. Well, come on, this is a very dry country. The sun is going to evaporate. So instead of that, what we do is we put it in the subsurface. That's it. We hide it. Mm -hmm. And and then because it's hidden, it, because it is hidden, uh, we don't need to worry about it. And it's going to basically change its quality. And we have to study this change in the quality with time and with location, of course, mm -hmm. uh, by in, in order to increase our water resources. That's exactly the idea of MAR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this it's a delicate balance, isn't it, uh, yeah. Xavier, as far as the quantity quality issue. And I know that many of the water experts are really always focused on the quality. Uh, but more and more, many cities and countries actually have to be worried about the volume of water uh, that you actually have. Now, looking at these charts and we, <clears throat> we're going through some of these uh, because this is very important as far as the quality is concerned also to make sure that there's sufficient quantity uh, for your citizens. So what is this chart telling us? Well, uh, well first, if you want, I, I give something about this quantity idea. If you want to look at a large city, whatever this large city, for example, Barcelona is 2 million people. Uh, we need uh, about, I was doing the conversion before, uh, 50 billion gallons per year of water uh, to mm -hmm. supply the city. So that's a huge amount of water. And then this is the quantity part. Now, now this one is related more to quality. So here, what you can see are a number of processes that take place when you infiltrate water from, from top down in this case, because it's just driven by gravity. And then this water starts with some quality, with some, for example, it has a lot of oxygen dissolved. And then uh, microorganisms uses, use this oxygen uh, to catalyze some some uh, reactions, some chemical reactions, so the the chemistry, so the actual contaminants uh, change as a function of depth, and and then it depends. In this case, for example, this is an example with in which temperature was extremely important, but there were more. I mean, uh, there there are just a few graphs, and then um, when you have all these wiggle things, mean that you have you infiltrate water when you have water. And then this water has a particular temperature and all these are driving all the processes that take place in the subsurface to change the quality of the water. Now, as we as we go through this, but I really want to get uh, to this map. Uh, why do we have this map and what what are we seeing here about the complexity of being able to provide water abundantly, great quality for the citizens? Yeah, in this case, uh, this is part of a previous uh, research project that we have in Europe. You have all these coordinated projects in Europe. Uh, in this case, we are we have several flags. Uh, we have uh, Portugal, we have Spain, we have this site uh, very close to Barcelona, Italy, uh, Malta, Israel. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not missing any, anybody. And, and then the idea was to find that all these infiltration ponds, which is one of the many types for managed aquifer research, can fail for many different reasons. And these reasons can be related to quantity of water, to quality of water, but they can also be related to economic aspects, health aspects, uh, I don't know, even religious aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we studied the, which were the most important depending on the location. So depending basically on the country, on the legal issues, social issues, and then of course the weather and uh, all the climate uh, relationships. So, so each one of these, as all, you cannot see in detail, but you can see the colors eh? and the colors means more risk uh, to fail the system and the color indicates basically what type of failure is mostly expected. And the whole thing about it, we don't really think about even religion uh, being involved as far as water is concerned, but it is uh, oh, yeah. depending on your faith uh, community, uh, how you view water, even the microorganisms in the water. Uh, has different meaning to uh, different people as we uh, as we move forward. So the technical and uh, all of these aspects, uh, how do we actually balance all of this so that the people understand that there are experts like you, Xavier, you're, you're looking at their best interest, you're doing the research, you're trying to find out the best way forward as far as balancing this quantity and the quality issue and all of this research, how does that give the general public comfort that you really are doing it on their behalf? Well, I hope with the situation, with, with, as the year passes, as the years pass, 
uh, people will understand that science will be the solution for most of the problems we are <laughs> humanity is facing nowadays or in the future or whenever whenever you you hear this one uh, then uh, the important point is in this case is the concept of multidisciplinarity so we are working in a problem in which we have water so we have hydraulics we have physics if you want to think about it mm -hmm. then it infiltrates and then you want basically chemistry changes and the way to re these these elements that are dissolved in the water react are driven by microorganisms so you need biology and of course in order to understand what happens in the future in the future means after it infiltrates what will happen within the aquifer you need geology mm -hmm. so uh, this is exactly our specialty we are uh, a multidisciplinary team each one of us has a different background and what we do is we study the problem in its full complexity. So it's mm -hmm. a very thorough, very complicated, very complex problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even more complicated because one thing affects the other one. Okay, so chemistry affects biology, biology affects infiltration capacity, infiltration capacity affects uh, food that is driven to the bugs and uh, whatever. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of very, very complicated. And that's exactly the idea. You, you can solve, or sorry, you can, uh, you can understand the problem in terms of mm -hmm. equations and then what you need to do is to solve equations and uh, solving equations of course you need computers to do that because they are very very complex mm -hmm. uh, coupled sophisticated heterogeneous whatever uh, all kinds of complexities you can imagine mm -hmm. and, and and that's the idea mm -hmm. uh, what we will need what we want to do answering more in detail your question i think i was just answering another question basically <laughs> no uh, what we what, the idea is how to convey this to society and that's a, that's a problem sometimes when you talk with university professors that sometimes we are not that good on, on this mm -hmm. on this topic but uh, we need to come to convey that uh, uh, using water managing for richer is very is safe i mean that's an important point uh, and all the things we are doing and not only us but all the researchers in the world that work in this topic is to and make people understand that this is a safe um, mm -hmm. technology. Right, and that's that's something that's very important. So Xavier, looking at the next five, 10 or 15 years, the Polytechnic Institute of Catalonia and Marsolut, what do you see for the growth and expansion of this type of research and the outcomes across the globe? Well, I think in, in the next years, what we need to do is to increase the amount of uh, facilities in the world in which we have this manage aquifer research type of work so we can increase the overall uh, water budget or the water resources if you want in many many places in the world that are facing the shortage particularly because of the uh, climate change issues that we will have uh, but there are many challenges still like like the fact of whether you know viruses, emerging compounds, in, uh, in uh, antibiotic resistant genes. So there are many, many issues still to be researched, both in the qua quantity type of thing and in the quality. And I hope we will be able to, to run this in the future for many, many years until retirement at least. Mm -hmm. Sounds absolutely wonderful. Thank you for being with us. This is Professor Xavier Sanchez Vela from Spain at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. Uh, thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet.